Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports what? Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio on this November 8th, a chilly November 8th, as we uh, recover from another uh, weather situation last week, hurricane, this week, nor'easter, and uh, we got a little snow on the ground. I actually got, I don't know, probably maybe eight inches yeah, or so. I would say about that. Because there I was definitely was... some snow, and I shoveled it this morning, so I know it was there. Um, but uh, we've recovered, and uh, it's supposed to be nice this weekend, so maybe it'll all be melted away, and we can get back to uh, some weather November weather instead of January, February weather, which we're having right now. Uh, but we're here 6 to 6.30, of course. Phone number is 203-792-4101. Open those phone lines early and often. Get on the horn, give a call, and we'll talk with uh, whatever sports you want to talk about. Um, and, of course, you can hear my man, Mr. Bob Rod Jr., right there. How you doing, Bob? Yeah, yeah. Everybody had seven fun. o'clock this morning, trying to break the the, the mess up. <laughs> At least there was uh, no major power out. This is true. This Last was week, very true. Uh, you know, power out was out forever, and people probably just got it back, if at all. Some people probably still don't even have it. And then here come that storm. But uh, no real power out. It's just report, so that is good. And of course, you can catch Bob's show Spotlight on Tuesday nights at nine. And uh, Wednesday re-airs at noon, yes. covering mostly the Whalers let's at this point. The Whalers, yes. And uh, let's, t- let's say hello to uh, Mr. Mike Tui in the control room. One-man yes. show again yes. this week. Mike is just the all-purpose guy. His show, Expose Cinema, Friday nights at 10 and uh, Wednesdays at 1. And that is not a re-air. Those are two separate shows. Yes. He likes to put us all to shame. Uh, mm-hmm. Showing off with all his shows he's got going on. Um, anyways, uh, Whalers, Bob, uh, let's We're, see. We, we got some problems. <laughs> a 1-1-1-2 one, one, one yeah, record. Don't, I don't understand the, the, the point streak. I'm I know. no mathematician, but that's a uh, weird, uh, mm. I don't really know what kind of record that is. What does that mean? I don't understand so We're going to have to get somebody from the FHL on the horn one of yeah. these days, and they can explain to us the standings. Yeah. And what that all means. But uh, uh, the way I saw it this morning in the paper, we're in fifth place. <laughs> fifth place, right, out of six teams. So that's yeah. not good. They no. lost two games to Cape Cod. One was in overtime. They lost to Dayton. Yep. Um, so that's not good. The Demons did it to them. So they're off to a little bit of a sluggish start. Uh, and the coach was suspended for three games for he his little tirade. did get suspended for that tirade, huh? And that overtime loss where yeah. they blew the 3-1 lead, losing yeah. 4-3 in Cape yeah. Cod. We thought he might get suspended, and sure enough, three games he got? Three games. He's no stranger to that situation. No. One of these years we'll, uh, we'll keep him out of the suspension ranks, but probably not. So uh, it, and the Oilers are home, what, this weekend on against Saturday Williamsport, night? Against yeah. Williamsport, yeah. They're, they're away on Friday against Cape Cod, so. Okay. Well, it's a long season. It's yeah. way too early to uh, be saying anything. They're a little sluggish out of the gate here, but I'm sure they'll be fine. We know they made it to the FHL Finals last year, and they're going to try to duplicate that and actually try to win it this year. So uh, early, uh, a little sluggish, but I think they'll be fine as we move forward. They got the good, good coach. Oh, yeah. You know, he's an energetic guy, and he knows what he's doing over there. And he's put together a good program, so I'm sure he's going to get these guys in shape and uh, they'll make another playoff run as the season goes on. So we will keep track of that and tune into Spotlight 9. You can see action of the games as Bob brings it to you. All right, Bob, let's jump right into it. It's mid-season in the NFL Yes, already. I know it is, and it's it seems like it went – we just started. <laughs> I know. The NFL season flies by. We're already going into, what, week 10? Yeah, it's – So uh, some teams have played eight games and yep. some have played nine, depending on your bye week situation. Um, and this past weekend, your team, the G-Men, yeah, they were at home with packed house, which yes. a lot of people thought maybe it wouldn't be because of the hurricane. Uh, but they came out in droves. They filled the stadium, and the refs certainly got involved early. It looked yeah. like maybe they were trying to make sure the fans went home happy. Oh yeah, with those questionable calls, Bob. Oh, there was a lot time. of interesting calls. Uh, interesting is just putting it nicely. <laughs> The refs were on the take. It was yeah. plain and simple in that first half, and the Giants had the lead there and then, because of that. Their first, the 14 points they scored in the first half were all courtesy yeah. of the refs, and they took points away from the Steelers. So uh, the Steelers do come back, however, in the second half, and they rally and stun the G-men and their G-men faithful there in New York. 
uh, beating them 24 to 20. Bob, this was a disappointing loss. And your Giants really, you know, we've been talking about this for weeks, really. You know, how many times are they just going to rely on the late uh, game magic? Coming up with the calls, we got the calls in that game, but they couldn't come up with the breaks late. They couldn't come up with the you know lucky plays here and there late. They couldn't come up with the Eli Magic late, yeah, and they've been struggling this year, Bob, in the red zone. Yeah. And this came back to bite them as they had opportunities to score touchdowns, catching breaks in this game, and they ended up with field goals. Right. Um, and you know, it just wasn't a great game overall. But they maintained the 2010 lead yeah. in the. Uh, fourth quarter there and it looked like they were going to come up with the win anyways but didn't happen and then the Steelers go for a fake field, field goal, goal down and that 20, didn't 17, work down by the goal line they go for a fake field goal um, which you know a field goal ties the right. game there right at 20 to 20 right and really the Steelers were out playing the Giants the running attack was just you know pounding the G-man uh, and they were out physicaling them. The G-Men like to be that physical team, but the Steelers no uh, stranger to physical football. Right. And they had it all on display, the physicality and the speed, as we see right there, Mike Wallace, with the catch and run and go and across the field and turns the corner, beats about five defenders to the edge, and then cuts it up field for the uh, really the momentum-changing and the game-changing play. That brought it to 2017, then they did that fake field goal, uh, but the defense forced the Giants to go three and out. Yep. Uh, so they got the ball right back in great field position, and they came right down and took the lead, and then the Giants had no late game magic. So the Giants moved to six and three, yep. still in great position, a two and a half game lead in that week. Weak NFC. Well, the whole, the whole. I mean, not, nobody, nothing changed. Everybody stayed the same. Uh, well, they did either that or they all got worse. Yeah. You know, stayed the same or just continued to fall. Yeah. The Eagles. Oh, the that Cowboys, was that was a that Eagle game was terrible. Against the worst defense in the history of the NFL, the Saints. The Eagles could not do a thing, and the Saints now uh, moving back into the picture. Maybe, maybe we'll get to that later. The wild card standings at this point. But the Eagles at three and five. The Cowboys, uh, they lose to the Falcons. Oh. I mean, that was well, a pathetic hey, game. The Falcons are still what undefeated. Eight, no, Falcons are perfect, and they're crying no respect. T. Gons, Tony Gonzalez, who has still never won a playoff game, been on a team that's won a playoff game, and this version of the Falcons has yet right. to win a playoff game either with Matty Ice. Uh, you know, they're talking the respect card right now. They beat the Eagles two weeks ago, and all week, all you heard on all the news stations was. Uh, what's going on with the Eagles? No right. mention of the Falcons. This week, they beat the Cowboys, yeah. and they're saying, are you going to talk about us? Or are you going to talk about what's going on with the Cowboys? Mostly yeah. I've been hearing what's going on um, with the with Cowboys. The Cowboys. Yeah. It's all been about Jerry Jones this yeah. week. You know, and uh, him saying he would fire himself if he was, yeah. you know, if he was the GM. You are the GM, yeah. Jerry Jones. So fire, fire yourself. yourself. Yeah. You know, what the heck? Fire Romo, too, while you're at it. Yeah, right. Get the clear, clean house. You guys are three and five. Irrelevant. You waste everybody's time. we got to talk about you every year because you supposedly got all this talent in the world. Uh, but they stink. And they, they get to play each other. One of those teams is going to win this week and move to four and five, right. which could get them back in the mix for the playoffs. But it's pretty deep in the NFC. Let's uh, take a quick look at that, actually. Packers right now getting better, 6-3. and three. Uh, Vikings and Seahawks. Vikings going downward. Yeah. Seahawks still going maintaining. Yeah. They're both 5-4. and four. The Bucks, the team to really watch right. out for uh, at 4-4. Four and four. And they played a shootout against the Raiders this past weekend. Lions keeping themselves in the mix right now at 4-4 four and four as well. Then you got the Cardinals going in yeah. the wrong direction. Started four and zero, and they've lost five straight, yeah. so they're four and five. Yeah. And then you got the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Saints, and the Rams, yeah. three and five. What's so it's a pretty deep situation with the wild card in the NFC. Um, but you know, there's a lot of teams that could uh, move around and shuffle the deck there. But you know, the Packers and the Seahawks. The Bucks and the Lions, I think, yeah. are the teams that are looking the best right now. Uh, and the Vikings are going to deal without Percy Harvin this weekend as they play the Lions. Uh, so we'll see what happens with them. They still got the number one rushing offense, AP, all day. Adrian Peterson there. But their uh, QB situation is preponderous as ponder. 
uh, <laughs> just cannot get it together. The numbers are terrible. And the Purple People Eater Here. defense, yeah. which was showing off well early in the year, is coming back down to earth, giving up points now. Um, other things going on in the NFC will stay right there. Um, we'll stay in the Falcons division. The Bucks we mentioned four and four, Saints three and five. So the Falcons are in cruise control right now at eight and zero. Oh. Bears seven and one, yeah. and they put up what a fifty spot yeah. on the uh, Tennessee Titans yeah. this past weekend. Wow, that was a that was a big. <laughs> Everybody was uh, talking about the Bears not so impressive the last couple of weeks, so they were impressive this weekend. Defense getting it done, offense getting it done. Still need a little bit more with the offense, but still. Uh, you know, you put up 50 points. It can't be That's all defense, but it was kind of almost all defense, actually, against Tennessee. <laughs> um, so they look good, and they play Houston this week, Bob. Right. Uh, I think that's a Sunday night game. Houston 7-1, and Bears 7-1, and a clash of AFC, NFC, two physical uh, teams going at it. So that'll be good. Uh, we mentioned the Packers. They have the bye this week. They're at 6-3. and three. And they already beat the Bears. Right. So, uh, you know, if the Bears slip up, the Packers could catch them. We mentioned the Vikings. We mentioned the Lions. And Harvin, again, is hurt, and he's one of their uh, top players for Minnesota. So that's going to hurt them in that matchup this weekend. Uh, the West, San Francisco, uh, they had the bye this week. They yeah. sit still at 6-2. and two. Seattle, we mentioned, with the nice win over Minnesota this past weekend. So they're 5-4 and four as they righted their ship a little bit. And they get to face the uh, J-E-T-S Jets, 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 Jets this Mr. weekend Sexy, in yeah, Seattle. Rexy. <laughs> you know, as the week goes on, the beginning of the week, Rex comes out with his press conference after the uh, bye week and says, we're not sniffing the playoffs right now. Right. Which made me wonder, I wonder what he did during the bye week. Maybe he was uh, sniffing his wife's feet, perhaps? <laughs> Well, yeah, he's got that foot fetish, right? <laughs> They're not sniffing the playoffs. Maybe he was sniffing his wife's feet, or maybe the team just sniffs like something yeah, well, rotten. Yeah, that too. Uh, but who they play in be? Seattle this weekend. Who, who is it going to be, Tebow or, uh, or? Tebow, then, as the week goes on, right? So uh, today you hear, I think, Cromartie saying, yeah. we're making the playoffs. Right. Proclamation time. The Jets will be making the playoffs, and Rex uh, likes to back up his players, and he says, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we feel that way. So at the beginning of the week, we're it's not sleeping the playoffs. Yeah. Now we are feeling like we're a playoff team. Yeah. Tebow then goes and says, the Wildcat hasn't been what I thought it would right. be. I'd like to be used more, basically. Everybody's calling for Tebow, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh, and Seattle's a tough place to play yeah. with a good defense. It's going to be tough to break out that Wildcat this weekend. Arizona, we mentioned four and five. The Rams coming off the bye week after they got blown out in London against the Patriots. Yes. Three and five, and they play San Fran this weekend. And so you're uh, going to the game, you said, right? Yes, that's right. Patriots coming off the bye are playing against the Bills this weekend, and I will be shuffling off to Foxborough, checking out Gillette Stadium this Sunday. Uh, and uh, checking them out against Buffalo. Uh, and they've had some good games the last few uh, years, dating back to last year. Patriots had, what, a 21-0 lead that they yeah. blew in the first game. Then uh, the Bills had a 20-0 lead against the Patriots last year that the Patriots came back and won 48-21 or something like that. This year, the Bills were up big against the Patriots in the first half, and the Patriots ran off 45 straight points. So uh, it should so, be a so, shootout. So who do you think? You think your defense is going to show up or are they going to be? Defense got a little better uh, in their last game against the Rams. They're improving. The bye week getting a little he healthier. Steve Gregory practiced this week. No signs of Patrick Chung yet, which is a little disappointing. I'd like to see him come back. Uh, but they're getting some guys back on defense. And then they made the trade, Bob. Did you yes. see this? With Tampa Bay trading for Aqib Talib. Uh, big trade. He's I'm not going to put him in the Revis category, but he but is a shutdown cornerback yeah. category, and that's what they need. And that will uh, help things out because uh, some of their other guys have been shifting around with these injuries, moving from safety, Devin McCourty over to cornerback, right. uh, out of position with some of these injuries. And also, as they try to figure out who can actually cover somebody, um, you know, they move guys around. But if they can get to lead, uh, in there and have him be a shutdown cornerback, get Gregory or Chung back healthy, get guys back in position, I think this defense has a good chance to improve as the season goes on. I will be looking forward to seeing them up close 
in personal this weekend. Is one o'clock yeah. start, one supposed to be nice. I was just gonna say. 60 something degrees. It'll be beautiful. It's yeah. gonna be a great day up there. I'll bring my camera. Um, so, so we'll, we'll have try some to... nice shots next week? Yes, yes we will. We'll have some nice shots. Hopefully I'll be sitting near the cheerleaders. I'll try to get some of those photos for you as well. have idea where you're going to be well. sitting yet? I do not know the seats. I know there's season tickets. Ah. Um, I did not ask where we're sitting. I'm just happy to be going. It's going to be good. I can't wait to deal with all that traffic up there. Getting in and out of the stadium is going to be a lot of fun. But it's going to be good. I am looking forward to it. Um, other AFC stuff that is happening uh the ravens look unimpressive again but yeah. you cannot discount the fact that they are six and two by right. as they beat the browns uh unimpressively this past weekend uh the browns fall to two and seven your steelers who we talked or the steelers who beat your g-men yes. who we talked about at five and three uh looking better by the week three straight victories it doesn't matter you know who's uh, at running back this weekend it was uh you know isaac redman Last weekend it was Jonathan Dwyer. You still got Rashard Mendenhall trying to get healthy. So they got three backs they can go to. Uh, they got speed with the wide receiver, although Antonio Brown went down in that game. Right. But Emmanuel Sanders, Jericho Kachi came through for them. So the Steelers winners of three straight uh, are looking better right now. Uh, so we'll see if they can catch. I mean, they play Baltimore, what, two out of three yeah. times coming yes. up. They haven't yet to play them so far so uh, we'll see what they can do and they got kansas city at home on monday night yikes yeah. those chiefs i wonder if our old friend uh, kevin gallagher oh, has joined right. in that twitter uh, uh movement maybe a million strong bring back save our chiefs have you heard about this movement no i have not there's some twitter page or something like that uh which is getting bigger by the week oh, as yeah. they are trying to save kansas city they want everybody there fired basically <laughs> Uh, and get them back where they need to be. The Chiefs, one and seven. The Jaguars, who play tonight, one and seven. The two worst teams in the league. This could be a trap game for those Colts, though, right. Bob. Um, yeah, Peyton with, might have to. Uh, uh, Andrew Luck, there, you mean? Uh, yeah, you know, I, with the great win over the Finns. And that was yeah. a good win right there. And that was a good matchup because the Dolphins are also in the mix with the wild right. card situation. Let's look at that right now. AFC wild card. Steelers, Colts, five and three. And the Colts, interestingly enough, play two out of their last three games of the year against Houston. So the division still could, could be, be go one way know, or the other. If the Texans stumble here in Chicago, the Texans have to go to New England in a couple weeks. Right. Um, the Colts were not ready to say for sure that they're legit, but they are playing well and they're getting it done. So uh, they're right now AFC wild card uh, front runner standings with the Steelers, the Dolphins, and the Chargers. We do not trust the Chargers. The Dolphins, maybe. Yeah, they're go. four and four. Yeah. So that <laughs> allows for these three and five teams, right. none of whom are impressive the Jets, the Bills, right. the Bengals, who have really been, you know, terrible, if right. you ask me. I thought they were much better than this. Uh, the Raiders. All three and five, All right. but with the other teams in the AFC, you can't count those guys out yet. So uh, a lot of stuff could take place, um, you know, as far as the AFC goes. And of course, the Broncos, uh, who tried to give away that game to the Bengals this weekend in Cincinnati, but then uh, Manning rallied, and they moved to five and three, a game ahead of the Chargers at four and four. The Raiders are still the team. That I, I don't know why I like the Raiders. They're, they're, they're just they, a gritty team. I just like them for some reason. I think they're going to have something to say about what's going on there. Uh, the Broncos are home for Carolina and then home for San Diego. So the game against San Diego after the Chargers blew that game a few weeks ago on Monday night, which has gotten the Broncos in this little bit of a run. Uh, so that is your uh, situation with the NFL. Of course, that phone line is open. Uh, as we are moving through the show here, 203-792-4101, if anybody wants to call. Fatty Roots was a little bit disappointed in me the other week. Why? Because he is also a Chiefs fan. Oh, is he? And he was a little bit upset that I was giving his team a hard time. Uh -oh. I said, what can I tell you? The chefs can't cook. Right. <laughs> That's the way it is, Fatty Roots. All right, college football real quick before we get to the NBA, Bob, which is underway. And yes, your uh, New York bricks are looking more like the Knicks. <laughs> yes. Right now, best start since 99. College football, BCS standings, Bama. 
K-State, Oregon, Notre Dame. What happened and it was with Notre tight, Dame? Jeez, that yeah. was a, that was it a was bad a tight, game. Uh, it was, and hey, what happened to Bama? Yeah. I mean, this juggernaut team, uh, they were up against it big time against LSU this weekend. And then the Tigers decided, uh, you know, they basically didn't want to win the game. All right. And some questionable play calling, questionable decisions to go for field goals. Uh, they stopped passing the ball when they were uh, attacking the Bama defense with the pass. And they went to the run game, got way conservative. And here came Bama in the final minute to rally for the win down there in LSU. So big win for Bama. They remain number one. The Irish, the Irish got luck of the Irish big time, Bob. They oh. were down, what, 20 to 10, much yeah. like I think Pittsburgh, right? I think it was the same situation yep. against Pitt. And uh, this, but Pitt couldn't hold on in no. college. It was a reversal of fortunes there as they came back, forced overtime with this red shirt freshman QB, yeah. who I was pretty much impressed by. He made some plays. Uh, he did make some mistakes too, but I was impressed by his activity there. And in overtime, though, Pitt lines up for the game-winning field goal. Their field goal kicker looked automatic, <laughs> absolutely automatic. But this is where it comes down to the snap, the hold, and, and the, the kick. They've yeah. got this kicker who's automatic, but the snap was bad, yeah. and he missed wide right. And the luck of the Irish comes through as they end up scoring the winning touchdown in the third overtime to beat Pitt, remain undefeated, and they get at BC. And BC is not any good this year. No. But this reminds me of years past when uh, BC stunned the Irish, uh, knocking them from the ranks previous years. So this is a long rivalry, long history there. Do not be shocked if BC gives them a game this weekend. Oregon uh, beats the Trojans, USC, who now have three losses. Weren't they the preseason number yes. one? And they have three losses now, 62 to 51. America wants to see Bama and their D yeah. against Oregon in that O. Yeah. Will we see it in a title game? We don't know. K-State is uh, trying to uh, throw a wrench in the system, but they have a situation this weekend because their Heisman hopeful QB was concussed, maybe. They're not really saying. Right. Looked like he got a concussion yeah. in that game against uh, OK State this weekend. Uh, and they play TCU this weekend, so and we don't know if he's playing or not. Right. So that's your college football situation right there. And uh, as we go, uh, I didn't leave myself much time to break down the NBA. We'll try to get through a quick the NBA. <laughs> Three and oh, Bob. Yeah. Then how about this? Stoudemire out. No yeah. problem, I guess. Yeah. Melo likes it uh, as he's the primetime guy. Doesn't have to share the ball with Stott. All right, these are the moves that the Knicks made in the offseason if you're just catching up with what's been taken. Marcus Canby back in New York City. Raymond Felton back in New York City. Kurt Thomas back in New York City. Then you bring in Ronnie Brewer, Rashid Wallace. I'm a big Rashid yeah. Wallace fan, and I'm a big Jason Kidd fan, right. and they bring in Jason Kidd. Back. What we am got, I going to do, whole, Bob? We got the team back from I the, like some the of the plays days. they got yeah. there. The Canby man. Yeah. Raweed Wallace, he should be playing out in Colorado for right. Denver, though, after the election results as yes. they legalized it <laughs> out there in Colorado and in Washington. Too right. bad there's not a team in Seattle anymore. He could have played there. We know Raweed likes oh, yes. to uh, burn the green, but yes. well, that's, that's a whole story. nother story. <laughs> whole nother story. Jay Kidd looking yeah. good so far. So the question is going to be with the Knicks. Age, old team, good roster. A lot of veteran experience, a lot of guys who know how to play basketball. Uh, will they be able to stay healthy, however? That's going to be the question. The Celtics, two and two, struggling a little bit out of the gate, but they have made a ton of moves as well, Bob. Yeah, they, they uh, he, uh, he got rid of certain <laughs> someone. Uh, he who shall not be named. Yes. <laughs> he moves into the Grady Little category. Yes. <laughs> he who shall not be named. Ray, he got game. Uh, sells out, yeah. moves to Miami. Yeah. Bye bye, Ray. They yeah. gave him the cold shoulder in that opening night game. Uh, but they did shore up that backcourt. I like the backcourt much better now. Leandro Barbosa, uh, Courtney Lee, defensive player. Leandro Barbosa, fast, up tempo guy. Jason Terry, the Jet, coming over from Dallas. They uh, don't have that many bigs they brought in. Jason Collins is a big time pro. Jared Sullinger. And Fad Mello, they drafted. Mello hasn't been doing much, but Solinger got two starts already. So they're getting some activity out of him. Darko Milicek, the former number one draft pick out of Detroit, 
Uh, they got him, and uh, they're going to count on the return of Avery Bradley from injury, yep. Jeff Green, and Chris Wilcox from heart surgeries. Wilcox finally made a difference in the game last night, and Wilcox, to me, is the key because he likes to run the court. He's a high-wire act. Him and Rondo really were developing good chemistry on the break last year before he went down with the heart ailment. So that's big. And then Brooklyn finally well, gets to open up their, uh, their, their arena there. They're is... one and two out of the gate here as they got crushed last night. Last night by the Heat, who yeah. are four and one. Yeah. Some new uh, guys in the new places in Brooklyn: Joe Johnson, Keith Boygans, Marshawn Brooks, uh, Daryl Wallace, who they got last year. He's still there. He's hurt right now, though. Josh Childress. I didn't know that they picked him up. Jay Chill, uh, Reggie Evans, Jerry Stackhouse is here as well. Uh, playing, all, of course, with D. Will, Darren Williams. So the roster has some guys. Brooke Lopez, of course, the Hump, Chris Humphreys. Uh, they could do some damage. I mean, a lot of people are picking them to do damage. Right. I'm going to have to wait and see. Other big stuff in the NBA is we're running out of time. Uh, Harden, uh, that trade from OKC to Houston, he backed up his 36-point performance with, what, 45 in yes. game two? And Jeremy Lin has looked pretty good as well. Lin Sanity down there in uh, Houston. The Bakers, Bob, yes. what's going on? Steve uh, Nash is already hooked. Dwight Howard can't help them. Yeah. They're one and four. Yeah, they're they're around the-, the They got beat by the clip joint. <laughs> LA is the new team in town in LA. Uh, Chicago Bulls, three yeah. and one without Derrick Rose. Yeah. The Mads, no Nowitzki, they're four and right. one. They play the Knicks coming up Friday night. Uh, and the Wolves, the T-Wolves, three and one, yep. with no Rubio and no Kevin Love. Right. Some other surprises, the Warriors yeah. come out to play 3-2, and two, Clippers 3-2. and two. The Thunder, after that trade, look a little shaky at 2-2. Two and two. The Spurs, 4-1, they beat them at the buzzer the other night. Jeremy Lamb and Hashim Fabit, for you UConn fans, they are playing for OKC right now. Right. Other players to watch, Rudy Gay is leading Memphis to a 3-1 and one start. And I mentioned uh, the Heat at 4-1 and one with Ray Ray playing better, and Rashard yeah. Lewis also playing better. We'll see if those guys can hold up as they are aging veterans as well. It's going to be a good NBA season. We'll get more into it probably next week, and uh, that'll be it. So, so uh, on out to watch the Whalers this week. Whalers this weekend, well, Hopefully Saturday we'll have a night. better game. <laughs> you know, maybe by next week they'll be above 500. We'll yeah. try to figure out what this record actually means. We are out of here. And uh, we'll we will see you next, see you next, next week. week. And hopefully it won't be no yeah. <laughs> hurricane or flood no or more anything else. for a week. Please. <laughs> Please. We're begging you. All right. Take care.